Hiya then folks, welcome to Boating on a Budget and today I really could be winging it as we say because I've got this ceiling to do and obviously doing a ceiling is never the easiest of things when you're trying to hold things above your head and mark them and cut them and screw them in place so it could be a little bit interesting we have got a couple of little jobs we need to do first though before we can actually start getting the boards on one of those is outside there's a, a mushroom vent as they're called which is basically the vent that allows air to circulate throughout the boat helps with condensation and stuff like that we'll probably talk a bit more in depth about things like that as we get a little bit further on in the project but that's been leaking ever since the day we bought the boat so we're gonna have to change that because obviously the last thing we want is all our nice hard work going to waste by it all getting wet and then we've obviously got to look at how the cables are going to run through, all the wiring. Because obviously above my head there's going to be two or three lights for the bedroom. And there's also out front got to be a horn and a headlight, at the very least, out there. So we need to make sure we've got a route for the cables to follow that we can get to easily enough in the future. And that's part of the key to it is, it's all well and good hiding all your wiring behind your panelling now. But then when you need to get to it six months down the line or two years down the line, it's all in the way. You can't find it and you can't get to it. So we'll have a look, we'll drill a few holes and we'll get a route through for all the cabling. And then we'll get these ceiling panels on. But first job is obviously nip outside, let's get this mushroom vent changed, stop these leaks, then we'll come back in and crack on. Before we start looking at cutting and fixing ceiling panels, better get some holes in for these cables then. Dead simple, cables are going to come up through this little channel that's going to be behind there and then we need a route for them to go round the hatch and across to where the lights are. I think kind of through here and then through each joist we'll need a hole big enough to feed cables through. I think that shows you the importance of having a nice sharp drill bit because that's just gone through them like a hot knife through butter. Right then, time for these ceiling panels. And I must say, this has been my biggest quandary since we actually started building this boat back up. And you might think, what's such a quandary about ceiling boards? Well, what I really wanted to do was do the whole bedroom area in just one sheet, one sheet of 8 before ply, cut to the right size and then cut out for things like the hatch and vents and things like that. But everything is so out of square on the boat that to try and get one sheet of ply and get it cut right I think will be nigh on impossible because the length down this side is different to the length down that side and the width at this end is different to the width at that end which is different to the width in the middle so trying to cut one sheet I think it would test my brain power way too much so I've gone for the compromise and I don't like compromise but there you go and we're going to use four sheets that are smaller and they'll be staggered across the bow where we've got the joists so they'll join up and we can put some nice trim on and in all fairness they'll look 
fine, brilliant, good, whatever, when they're done. I just had in my mind I wanted to do it with that one sheet. But anyway, what we've got is sheets that are two foot wide and the joists are two foot apart, so that's ideal. So all we need to do is cut them to length. And this end, down here, we need to cut to 117 and a half centimetres or about 46 and a quarter inches for those who are working Imperial. So 117 and a half. Time for a test fit. I reckon that's going to be bang on. So what I'm going to do to make it easier for whilst it's up there, I'm going to pre-drill and counter sink the holes down the edges and down the middle so that when I lift it up, I'm not struggling with screws and drills and things. Just lift it up, screw it in. Right, now we want to mark and counter sink the holes. So I've got a piece of timber that's about 10 mil wide, which is sort of just short of half an inch. What that'll mean is, if we use this, it's sort of stepping the screws back, just enough so that they're obviously not too close to the edge, but keeping them so that it is nipping the edge of the timber up. What I want is my first screw about two and a half centimetres, or an inch in, from either end. And then from there, we want them about six inches apart. It's not going to work exact, but I'll show you the little trick for that. So if we go 15, 30, 45, 60, and then come back in from that side, 15, 30, 45, 60, you can see those two are fairly close together, so all we need to do, if we just take a halfway measurement from them and do that one there, and ignore those two, that's going to be close enough, because you're not really going to see these screws anyway. It's just getting a nice, even, consistent number of screws across the board. This really is where the fun begins, because I've now got to lift that up, hold it in place and screw it into the ceiling. I've got a couple of these bits of wood that I've cut just slightly longer than the actual gap there. So hopefully once I've got it roughly in place I can wedge it with them and then just position it exactly. Then get a couple of screws in, then I need to nip outside. And since I've not had to fasten that top cap on yet on the mushroom vent, I can lift that off and then mark where I need to cut the hole. That's the easier way of doing it rather than trying to work out and measure it and you know, to get it in the right place. So I think I'm about as geared as up, up as I can be. Let's give it a try. Fortunately, with them being only been fairly small sheets, I shouldn't struggle too much. Famous last words. That's got that end roughly in place. And that end, let's now just check, see whether it all fits. At the minute, it's just slightly that way so I need to just try and twist it without disturbing these too much. Here 
There we go. I think that's got it. So what I'll do now is, I don't actually need to put any screws in that, I've got it firm enough. I'll nip outside, mark where the mushroom vent is, then take it back down. Yeah, so that I got it roughly marked out. It's not a particularly great circle, but as long as I don't go daft, I don't need it to be a perfect circle because that's going on over the top. That just needs to make sure that's a bigger hole than that. So it sits on there, and then obviously the edging strip there will cover it up. Right, so we're not drilling through the bench. Now we just need to wrestle it back into location again. This time I'm going to need to make sure I get it millimetre perfect because obviously, although, like I said, this board will come down at a later stage when we work out where lights and things are going, the holes will still be there. So, I need to get it bang on exactly where it's going to be. Perfect for that, got that in the right place. I'm happy that's bang on then. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to work from these middle screws outwards, because if you work from the outside inwards, you can sometimes find you've just got a little bit of a sag in the middle and you've no way of getting rid of that. Working from the middle out means you're pushing any sag out. Does that make sense? First one in, let's carry on down. Next board, roughly held in place then, but obviously I'm going to need to cut this section out for the hatch. And again, that's going to be far easier doing it like I've just done the mushroom vent. Go and take the hatch top off, draw it out from in there, and I know I've got it exactly right. So if I start measuring and trying to get the right dimensions in here, you can always go a little bit off if you don't quite get your angles right. So, on the part side, hatch off, mark it out. Right, that's it marked out then, so I'll just whip this down, cut it with the jigsaw like before, screw it in place just like before. Must say I think I'll leave the hatch open for a bit though, because at the minute I've got to have log burner on so I can make a brew, the all important brew, because obviously we've no gas, no electric or anything, but it's not actually that cold. So I've got log burner on, like six foot away from me, sweating, that'll give me a bit of ventilation.
bedroom ceiling done. All right, it's not quite done, because like I said, this is basically the first fix. A lot of it is going to have to come back down when we work out where we want the lights and things like that. Which you might say, well, why didn't we just do that beforehand? But what we want to do is get the bedroom sort of finished so we can get a feel of where the lights want to be, because we don't want loads in here, probably only two or three lights. And there is going to be a cupboard unit sort of built here, which is probably going to be the next task that I'm going to look at doing. And once that's in, that'll give us sort of the feel for how the bedroom is. And then we can plan the final bits, like I say, like the lights and any PowerPoint stuff like that that we want. And then obviously once the wiring and things like that are in, we can get these corner pieces on and finally trim it up right at the front there and really start to make it look like a bedroom, not a workshop. Is it just me or does it actually feel like we are slowly making progress. I know we've got loads and loads to do. I mean, this is basically just the front eight foot of the boat and there's sort of another 30 odd foot left to do. And we're not done down here yet either. Not by a long chalk. But you know, it's coming together. We've got a bed, we've got some siding on, we're getting a ceiling on. We're not rushing it. It's taking however long it takes. And we're not anywhere near kind of a finishing stage of anything yet either. You know, we're not putting decorative trims on, we're not painting stuff or anything like that. The thing is though, the ticky list is probably still actually getting longer, not shorter. Because the more we do at this stage, the more jobs you realise that there are to do. So instead of thinking, oh yeah, we're getting down that, I'm now actually thinking, well, the list's gone from that long to that long. But we'll get there. Hopefully then you've liked this video. It's perhaps not been one of the most exciting ones we ever do, but we do have to put them all on there, show you what's involved. Some jobs are really good, some jobs are a bit more mundane. You know, we can't all be partying all day long, can we? So hopefully if you've liked it, give us a thumbs up. If you've disliked it, give us the thumbs down. But tell us why you're giving us the thumbs down. I'm sure also you're already subscribed to the channel and you've dinged the little bell. By subscribing, it's entirely free and you are just getting notifications through YouTube each time we put a video on so you can follow the progress. At the minute, some weeks we're putting two, three, four videos a week on. Other weeks, there might be no video. Because obviously, if we're doing something we've already shown you, then we're not going to show you again. Because there's no point, is there? I mean, like when we get down that end and we start putting these ceiling panels on, We'll not bother showing you again, because you've already seen it. I said we'll not bother showing you again, because you've already seen it. I said, no, we'll not carry on with that. But no, hopefully you've enjoyed it, and we'll see you all later, folks. Bye-bye.